Let's fast forward to the 20th century, and not to Jamaica or the Bahamas, not to Port Royal or Nassau, but to Trinidad, where a man called Boise Singh, anyone heard of Boise Singh? Was born on April the 5th, 1908 in Woodbrook. He had a long career as a gangster and gambler, but then turned to piracy. He and his gang terrorized the waters of Trinidad and Venezuela, killing some 400 people. One of his practices was to ferry people between the two countries, but to rob them at gunpoint, kill them, and dump their bodies in the sea. Boise was known and feared. He strutted around in bright clothes and bling, like today's notorious dons in every Caribbean island, apparently with no exception among us, feared by all, and nannies would warn the children, behave yourself or Boise go and get you. Uh, sorry, I didn't do that in my Trinidad accent. He was finally hung in 1957, not so long ago, for murdering his niece. Not for the 400 he killed, but for murdering his niece. Trinidadians are very emotional about family. <laughs> in the last two decades, there have been two developments that demand our attention. The first is the dramatic escalation of piracy in the Indian Ocean, the Persian Gulf, and particularly off Somalia. Major acts of aggression, murder, kidnapping, ransoming, and destruction of ships have been occurring in large numbers, with enormous difficulty faced by the larger nations in controlling it. These are major challenges for the international shipping community and create difficult legal situations. Somalians have perfected the art of piracy. piracy. They have made it their national achievement, much as the Spanish are noted for bullfighting, the Italians for lovemaking, and the Jamaicans for sprinting. A 2011 Somali piracy update on the web says, there are now 25 vessels and 601 hostages being held by pirates off the coast of Somalia, according to the International Chamber of Commerce. The total includes three ships hijacked between Christmas Day and December 27, 2010. So Christmas was a time for doing this. A Taiwanese fishing vessel with 26 crew members on board hijacked 120 knots off the northeast tip of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. An Antigua Barbuda flagged cargo ship, the EMS River, captured with its crew of eight, and the MV Thor Nexus, a Thailand flagged cargo ship. So ships that are registered all over the world, including the Caribbean, and ships are registered all over the Caribbean, uh, cruising international waters, are being seized by the Somalians. Note the Antiguan connection, because global shipping connects us all. Only last week, the website gcaptain.com reported on September the 21st that the International Maritime Bureau reports that pirates aboard two skiffs with guns and RPGs boarded the general cargo ship Pacific Express while underway 300 miles east of Mombasa. The crew members were able to retreat to the vessel Citadel and to request assistance. The result of that was that the pirates, unable to take control of the vessel, set the ship ablaze to force the crew out of the citadel. NATO's counter-piracy flagship, Andrea Doria, responded, sent a boarding team, which evacuated the crew unharmed. All pirate victims have not been quite so lucky. I'm told there's a video on the web showing an interview with a Somali pirate who again has a logical explanation for the whole thing. They deny that there are pirates, but fishers of men. <laughs> this man claimed that the big Japanese trawlers and trawlers from other big countries fish off their coast and have destroyed their livelihood, catching fish, including the little fish, and throwing dead fish back. And that they are therefore forced to retaliate against the international community who permits this to make a livelihood. And hence they catch boats and men growing richer with a larger fleet week by week. And they have therefore, you might say, given Christ's injunction to be fishers of men a whole new meaning. Here in the Caribbean, we are close to South America 
and particularly to Venezuela and Mexico, where acts of piracy are significant. Web searches will reveal frightening personal accounts as well as reports and general advice for avoiding risk. Of course, there is the usual distinction between violent armed robbery of a boat in port or within territorial waters and piracy outside of territorial waters. Caribbean Compass, the Caribbean's monthly look at sea and shore, that's the full name, is the Caribbean's yachting magazine, and it carries reports of armed robberies and piracy risks around the region as well as elsewhere. For example, one report I found stated a look at the tables of island-by-island -island crime reports at www.caribcruises.com will yield numbers which are useful. And it goes on. Some examples chosen at random. Between the start of 2003 and 2006, there were 59 crime reports from Margarita, 44 from St. Lucia, 20 from Grenada, 20 from Trinidad, and in Dominica, and I quote, an armed boarding and robbery there earlier this year which landed the skipper in hospital was bad news, and 24 incidents were reported to the net in a three and a half year period. And a personal report in Caribbean Compass of an attack by mass gunmen on a yacht in Margarita with brutal beating of crew and major theft made for frightening reading. What we appear to have in the Caribbean is a range of criminal acts, from simple theft from a boat that's at anchor to aggressive armed robbery with brutality and sometimes murder, both in port and at sea within the territorial waters or more rarely, just outside the 12 mile limit. And there seems to be what one might call a crime gradient, with the Venezuelan coast to the south proving to have the highest risk. Another less obviously criminal but also frightening feature of our waters is the vultures who hang around the Grenadines apparently looking for opportunities to rescue people who run onto sandbars or reefs. And one such personal account I've heard sounded pretty tense and frightening with aggression, bullying and possible extortion on the cards until a nearby friendly yacht came to the rescue. But it's thought that much crime against the yachties is not reported for a whole variety of reasons. Some argue that it must not be noised abroad, like publishing crime in our newspapers because it will scare the tourists off. Others, of course, argue for reporting and consequently better action. My own perception after two or three weeks of researching the issues and getting computer screen, catatonia, backache, and neurosis is that times change and crime waves are a natural phenomenon, as we all know. It is clear that poor government, financial problems and unemployment has always led to crime, and piracy is no exception. We are in a long recession. In 17th and 18th century Caribbean, in Somalia and the Indian Ocean today, and potentially anywhere that the perfect storm of human and environmental conditions develop, then crime raises its ugly head. And we may have a perception of piracy being romantic, but it's far from that. The romance is very much a myth. A lot of the piracy stories, of course, are some myths, some romantic, some like Sam Lords being a pirate, and. My friend Robert Foster has just handed me Jewish Pirates of the Caribbean uh, by Edward Pritzler, a new book about pirates and its subtitle, How a Generation of Swashbuckling Jews Carved Out an Empire in the New World in Their Quest for Treasure and Religious Freedom. That is one heck of a subtitle. And uh, with respect to Robert, who's just got hold of this book, and I don't think he's even read it yet. I'm not sure. Have you, Robert? Um, the, the, the Sephardic Jewish authority and great scholar who reviewed it, and I found that review also on the web, minutes after Robert told me about the book this afternoon at 5 o'clock, um, suggests that the title, like much in the book, has a certain romantic embroidery to it. People love to think of piracy as being romantic, and nobody has done more for that worldview, of course, than Disney Studios and Jack Sparrow and Johnny Depp. 
I'm always acutely aware that when my wife and I returned home to Barbados in 1977, there was a sign over the customs bench. And in those days, the customs bench was about as long as the stable, with two, and if you were three, if you were lucky, three customs officers behind it. And over the bench on the wall at the back was a little sign that you could just read comfortably. And what did that sign say? It said, Barbados does not have a drug problem. Help us to keep it that way. Today, some 34 years later, Barbados clearly does have a drug problem. It's alleged that while the mystic marijuana was introduced to Barbados in the late 60s from the land of wood and water in the West, and cocaine, like carnival, was introduced via the land of the hummingbird to the south 20 years later in the 80s, it is alleged. And Kitchener and Sparrow and Calypso and Pan have all undoubtedly fertilized richly the Bayesian culture. And many of we too have learned we love to party too, like our Trini cousins. And so the opportunism of people like Boise Singh and the pirates of Venezuela, almost within spitting distance, is not at all far-fetched imagination. Indeed, it does not take a wild stretch of imagination to conceive that our three great epidemics of the last three decades, the drug epidemic, our HIV AIDS epidemic, and our chronic disease epidemic could easily be followed by a fourth epidemic of piracy and armed robbery on the waters between our islands. And it only takes one nasty incident with a well-known celebrity, whether off Maracaibo or off Beque, to kill Caribbean tourism for a good while. Today, I believe, from what I heard on the radio, is World Tourism Day, and our visitors on yachts are a very big part of tourism across the Caribbean. And so my question is, are we prepared? I am told that all yachtsmen, all fishermen, all boat skippers have radio contact with their port base, and that their first call for help would be quite straightforward. I am told that pleasure cruisers tend to move in concert down the Grenadines and to be in touch with each other. I am told that the regional security system, the RSS, has planes which do patrols and can move resources, but they respond to a national call. We have seven Eastern Caribbean countries from St. Kitts in the north to Grenada in the south as members of our regional security system, but only Barbados has boats that can actually respond. I am told that the others used to have boats, but they've fallen apart or, in one way or another, no longer effective. They're no longer apparently considered a priority by the governments of our neighboring countries. And so coast guards in those countries are really coast guards in name only. And if my understanding is correct, and the coast is chiefly guarded by police, perhaps shooting at the distant boats from the beach with their handguns. Our regional security system, or RSS, has an overarching responsibility. But since it can only respond to country requests, alarms must be channeled through radio to the country coast guard. And so there's a bit of a problem here, and possibly a bit of a bureaucratic layer there, I suspect. The strongest resources of the RSS, I understand, are small planes for reconnoitering the waters for drug runners. One security system, of course, that we all used to have, but now virtually defunct, are our lighthouses. And our fabulous lighthouses at Ragged Point and South Point, which are historic treasures, but rather neglected, and have huge tourism potential, are another matter. In medicine, as in old Barbadian households with thoughtful grandmothers who looked after our health and said, always an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, so too with security and crime. And so my question is, are we prepared? There is a worldwide epidemic of lawlessness and piracy has exploded in some parts of the world. The Caribbean was once the leader, the world leader in piracy. 
and earned the phrase the golden age of piracy as if it was a precious thing to have. As in matters of health, our mantra must be prevention and preparedness. I hope this lecture, these sobering historical facts and these thoughts will serve to help us to be prepared and to be able to prevent a new age of Caribbean piracy. Thanks for sharing. Thank you.